Good day everyone, this is Ames Casalamachica and today I will be reporting about anthelmentics. Anthelmentics is a combination of the words anti and helminth. Helminths, or also known as parasitic worms, are large macroparasites. Many are intestinal worms that are soil transmitted and infect the gastrointestinal tract. These are responsible for considerable losses to the livestock industry, mainly because of slow and poor growth and development of affected animals, as these helminths live in and feed in living hosts. They receive nourishment and protection while disrupting their hosts' ability to absorb nutrients. These helminths are nematodes or the roundworms, cestodes or tapeworms, and trematodes or the flukes. Anthelmintics are drugs that are effective against any one or all three groups of helminths. There are three classifications of anthelmintics. These are antinematodal drugs or drugs that are effective against the nematodes or roundworms. Antisystodal drugs are drugs that are effective against the cestodes or tapeworms. And antitrematodal drugs are the drugs effective against the trematodes or flukes. What is an ideal anthelmintic? First, it should have high efficacy. The drug must exhibit high level of antiparasitic action. If a drug eliminates 95% of GI nematode burden from ruminants, it is said to have good efficacy. However, its efficacy is poor if it eliminates only 70%. An efficacy of 100% for all stages of parasite is not necessarily a desirable effect. Since this totally eliminates the source of antigenic stimulation by the organism and may weaken the animal's acquired resistance to the parasite. The next standard is that it should have broad spectrum of activity against both mature and immature parasites including larvae. It should have wide therapeutic index. It should be easy to administer to a large number of animals. It should not exceed approved limits of drug residue or should not require long withdrawal period because of residues and it should be economic. General mode of action of anthelmintics. There are two classifications. This is the first. Drugs affecting the energy production of the parasites. Under this, we have the inhibitors of fumarate reductase enzyme and mitochondrial reactions. These type of drugs inhibit fumarate reductase enzyme action, blocking the generation of ATP and resulting in muscular paralysis and eventual death of the parasite. Examples are benzimidazole prodrugs, levamisole, and bithionol. Next are inhibitors of tubulin polymerization and glucose uptake. These drugs bind to free beta tubulin, inhibiting its polymerization and thus interfering with microtubule dependent glucose uptake. In absence of glucose, there is depletion of the worm's glycogen reserve, which makes it unable to produce ATP necessary for its survival. The next drugs are inhibitors of electron transport mediated oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria of the parasites. These drugs interfere with the electron transport in the mitochondria and thereby inhibit the oxidative phosphorylation and generation of ATP. The fumarate is converted to succinate but ATP is not produced. These drugs are mainly effective against flukes and tapeworms. Next are inhibitors of glycolysis. The other classification are the drugs affecting the neuromuscular system of the parasites, thereby causing paralysis. These drugs work by inhibiting the destruction or by mimicking or enhancing or antagonizing the action of neurotransmitters. This will then result to either spastic or flaccid paralysis of the parasite and the paralyzed parasite is expelled by the normal peristaltic movement of the host. Cholinergic agonists these drugs stimulate and subsequently block the neuromuscular junctions, resulting in sustained muscle contraction and spastic paralysis of nematodes. Anticholinesterases These drugs cause inhibition of acetylcholinesterase enzyme, followed by constant depolarization due to accumulation of excess ACH or acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. This leads to interference with neuromuscular transmission and consequent paralysis and expulsion of the parasite through enhanced intestinal peristalsis. Muscle hyperpolarizers, an anticholinergic action at the myoneural junction in worms, producing competitive or non-depolarizing type of neuromuscular blockade like curare. This results in hyperpolarization of the muscle membrane of the worm 
leading to flaccid paralysis, facilitating its expulsion. Potentiation of inhibitory neurotransmitters or GABA agonists. This drug act by potentiation of GABA ergic transmission between nerve and muscle. Potentiation of GABA leads to hyperpolarization of both synaptic cells, leading to interference with neurotransmission to muscles and consequent muscular paralysis. Other anthelmintics have different actions. Some are affecting parasite production. Some affects the permeability of the cells and cause vacuolation of the tegument. Some cause disruption of tegument of parasites, and the others act by a known mechanism. Anthelmintic resistance. Resistance to anthelmintics by the worms develops somewhat slowly in comparison to antibiotic resistance in bacteria. However, the development of resistance by nematodes to different groups of anthelmintics is becoming widespread. Continuous use of a highly selective anthelmintic results in selective removal of the most susceptible genotypes, resulting in succeeding resistant progeny. The resistance is manifested by passage of increased number of parasite eggs, higher establishment rates of adult worms in the host, and greater number of larvae on the pasture after treatment than would occur if the parasites were susceptible to the antiparasitic drug. Cross resistance may also occur between drugs having similar mode of action. Resistance to anthelmintic can be prevented by designing management practices to reduce exposure to parasites and to minimize the frequency of use of anthelmintics. Development of resistance can be delayed by slow rotation of different chemicals with different mechanisms of actions. Planning treatment of whole herd or flock at a time by taking proper control measures against the parasitic phase in the host at proper time and to the free-living non-parasitic stages in the environment. The first classification of anthelmintic is the antinematodo drug. These drugs work on roundworms. There are also different classifications of antinematodal drugs. First is the simple heterocyclic compounds. Under this is the pipirazine or the diethylene diamine. Its antiparasitic action of different salts of pipirazine is mainly due to the pipirazine base. For the anthelmintic spectrum, all the derivatives of pipirazine have similar efficacy. These drugs are good for ascarid and nodular worm infections of all the species of domestic animals, moderate for pinworm infections, variable effect on other worms like hookworms and strong gels, but no effect on whipworms, tapeworms, and flukes. They have a wide margin of safety in all domestic animals. For the mode of action, anticholinergic action at the myoneural junction in worms, producing a competitive or non-depolarizing type of neuromuscular blockade like urare, blockade of succinic acid production by the worm, and reversible inhibition of neuromuscular transmission in the worm by acting like GABA. The end result is the flaccid paralysis of the worms. For the safety and toxicity, the toxicity is normally very low. Sometimes neurotoxicity and emesis occur in small animals at higher doses. The drug can be administered to pregnant animals and also to those animals suffering from gastroenteritis. As for the contraindications, there are no known contraindications except in long-standing renal or liver diseases. In heavy ascarid infections, treatment with bipirazine or OP compounds result in intestinal blockade and rupture due to expulsion of large masses of worms simultaneously. Benzimidazoles are preferred in treating such cases because the death of worms is slow and expulsion is delayed. Bipirazine and oxantel are mutually antagonistic. The next drug is the phenothiazine. For the anthelmintic spectrum, this drug has a wide range of activity against gastrointestinal nematodes and mainly used in ruminants and horses. The drug possesses good anthelmintic activity against stomach worms of ruminants, nodular worms of ruminants and swine, hookworms, and small intestinal nematodes. Despite the greater sensitivity of horses than ruminants to phenothiazine poisoning, the drug is still used in equine because of its excellent efficacy against strong giles. This drug is ineffective against equine ascarids in bots. It is also not effective against parasitic larva stages or immature adult worms of any of the ruminant parasites except immature forms of hemonchus, which are effectively removed. 
This drug is effective against sickle worm of chickens and turkeys. It has no action against flukes and tapeworms. The exact mechanism of which phenotyazine destroys the worm is not known, but it may be due to inhibition of certain vital enzymes in the tissue cells of the parasites, and the drug affects the parasite's reproduction and low level of feeding of the drug to animals inhibit the egg production of the parasites remaining in the GI tract of the host, ultimately reduce the pasture contamination by the helminth eggs forms the basis of control measure in cattle and sheep management. Contraindications include cachectic, weak, anemic, constipated, and emaciated animals. Concurrent use of this drug and organophosphates is contraindicated as phenothiazine potentiates organophosphate toxicity. The drug is contraindicated in pregnancy, especially during the last month of gestation. However, this drug causes no interference with conception or embryonic development. Disadvantages include pink coloration of milk, red coloring of urine, and drug resistance against some strains of hemonchus to phenothiazine when used for longer periods. The next type of drug is the benzimidazole. For the safety and toxicity, it is extremely well tolerated by domestic and wild animals, and some of the benzimidazoles produce teratogenic effect during early pregnancy. As for the anthelmintic spectrum, it has broad spectrum, high degree of efficacy, and have good margin of safety. Imidazole, a type of benzimidazole, possess antibacterial, anthelmintic, antiprotozoal, and antifungal action. For the contraindication, a sufficient withdrawal period for slaughter of meat animal is required, and the milk of the treated animals should not be used for human consumption. Parbendazole, cambendazole, and albendazole is contraindicated during early pregnancy in sheep and cattle due to teratogenic effect. As for the mode of action, all the benzimidazole act on parasites by interfering with their energy-generating metabolism. All except mebendazole and flubendazole are inhibitors of fumarate reductase enzyme system and thereby inhibit the generation of mitochondrial ATP. Mebendazole and flubendazole inhibits glucose transport. Cambendazole and fenbendazole inhibit fumarate reductase and glucose transport. Thiabendazole inhibit egg production by helminths by inhibiting protein synthesis. Benzimidazole prodrugs. These compounds are metabolized in vivo to produce benzimidazoles and need to be administered at doses high enough to produce sufficient active metabolites. Their mode of action, pharmacokinetics, and spectrum of activity are similar to those of benzimidazoles. These are the following drugs. Febantel is a precursor of fenbendazole, effective against GI nematodes. Netobimin is a prodrug of albendazole. It is effective against GI nematodes, their larvae, tapeworms, and flukes. However, this drug has teratogenic effect. The next drug is thiopanate. It produces the metabolite lubendazole. It is active against most nematodes of farm animals. The next classification is imidazothiazoles. A drug under this is the butamisole hydrochloride. It is an injectable anthelmintic used in dogs to treat whipworm and hookworm infections. It has low margin of safety. Toxic symptoms include vomiting, ataxia, recumbency, and convulsions. Contraindications include severely diseased animals, animals with renal and hepatic disorders, and heartworm positive dogs as it may cause fatality. Tetramisole and levamisole. These are used as hydrochloride salt, which is highly soluble in water. It can be given orally or by injection. These are effective against almost all GI nematodes, lungworms, and hookworms in ruminants, canine, horse, pig, and chicken. Its efficacy include larval and immature stages of GI parasites of ruminants, and in poultry, it is effective against Capillaria obstignata, Ascaridia galli, and it has no activity against flukes, tapeworms, and protozoa. Now for the mechanism of action, it affects the neuromuscular system of the parasite by acting as cholinergic agonist. It has a nicotinic-like action, stimulating and subsequently blocking the neuromuscular junctions. It sustained muscle contraction and paralysis of nematodes. It then acts as a ganglionic stimulant causing muscular paralysis. 
At high concentration, it interferes with carbohydrate metabolism by inhibiting fumarate reductase enzyme system. Next, we have tetrahydropyrimidines, pyrantel, an imidazotiazole derivative. It is used as tartrate or palmate salts. It has broad spectrum of efficacy and it is effective against GI parasites of sheep, cattle, swine, horse, and dogs. For the mode of action, it affects neuromuscular system of the parasite by acting as a cholinergic agonist. Morontel is a methyl ester of pyrantel. The salts have greater ontelmentic activity than the pyrantel. Their pharmacological properties are similar, and morontel tartrate is a safer drug than pyrantel tartrate. These are contraindicated to debilitated animals and should not be administered together with other cholinergic drugs like levamisole as it may lead to potentiation of toxicity. Organophosphorus compounds. These are originally developed as systemic insecticides and the safety is often poor. For this mode of action, it inhibits acetylcholinesterase enzyme leading to an interference with neuromuscular transmission and consequent paralysis of the parasite. For the contraindications, this should not be used simultaneously with other cholinesterase inhibiting agents or chemicals. These are also contraindicated for use in cows at the third stage of pregnancy. Another contraindication is for the lactating cows or goats producing milk for human consumption because of residues. With rural period of 7 days prior to slaughter is recommended. Other drugs under this classification are comophos and dichlorvos. Comophos is originally developed as pesticide for treatment of external parasites of livestock. It can be used in lactating animals without requiring the milk to be discarded after treatment. It is effective against hemonchus, ostertagia, and etc. It is mainly used as a helminth preventive. It has also a narrow margin of safety and only healthy animals are dosed. On the other hand, dichlorvos is effective against toxocara and toxascaris. This enthelmintic is used for dogs, cats, pigs, and horses. This is effective against whipworms in dogs and swine. It is not effective against migrating hookworms and ascarid larvae and has no effect on tapeworms. Next, we have macrocyclic lactones, avermectins, and milbimycins. Avermectins are a group of chemically related enthelmintics produced by the fermentation of an actinomycet streptomyces avermetilis. These drugs lack antibacterial or antifungal activity. The drugs under this are ivermectin, abamectin, and duramectin. For the mode of action, paralysis of the worms by potentiation of GABA or G transmission by opening chloride channel between nerve and muscle. Flukes and taped worms do not use GABA as neurotransmitter and are not affected by ivermectins. Ivermectin is a very potent nematocyte and ectoparoticide by oral and parenteral routes. It is effective against all stages of parasitic GI nematodes and lungworms including canine heartworm larvae. It is a potent ectoparasiticide and effective against warbles, lice, and mites. It has no activity against tapeworms and flukes, however. Dung of ivermectin-treated animals does not decompose. This drug is also readily absorbed, especially when given parenterally. High concentration of this drug sustained in tissues for long periods in residues occur mainly in the liver and fat. The drug is excreted in feces and urine. For its toxicity, it has minimum tenfold margin of safety for ruminants, horses, swine, and dogs. It should not be administered parenterally to horses and may be toxic to certain breeds of dogs. It is not embryotoxic in domestic animals, but it is teratogenic to rodents. Acute toxic signs include CNS depression, listless, ataxia, and recumbency followed by death. For the precautions in cattle, it must not be treated within 21 days of slaughter. It should not also be used in milk-producing animals or in dairy cows for 28 days prior to calving. Milbimycins. Milbimycin D is used only for treating dogs. It is active orally against roundworms for dogs and prophylactic against heartworms at higher monthly doses. The mode of action is same as ivermectin. In higher doses, it causes neurological disorder in collie breeds of dogs. Milbimycin oxime. It is used as tablets orally in dogs at monthly intervals for prevention of heartworm disease and to treat hookworms. Moxidectin. It is a semi-synthetic derivative of milbimycin used for treating cattle. 
This is administered subcutaneously in cattle and has some broad spectrum of activity against roundworms and ectoparasites as ivermectin. Drugs acting against heartworms. First is the elimination of adult heartworms, and under this is the drug thiacetarsamide sodium. Chemically, it is an arsenical compound and is the only drug used for the elimination of adult heartworms in dogs. It does not affect the circulating microfilaria. For the mode of action, it interferes with the energy production of the parasite by inhibition of glycolysis. Its effectiveness include adult worms that die usually within 5 to 7 days and occasionally not until 14 days. For the precaution, this drug is hepatotoxic and nephrotoxic. This drug is highly irritating to subcutaneous tissues, so during the IV injection, care must be taken to avoid perivascular leakage as it may result in local swelling and sloughing. Injection of steroids into the area helps in reducing inflammation. For the toxicity, the symptoms of arsenic toxicity is like persistent vomiting, ecterus, or orange-colored urine, and the toxicity can be treated with dimercaprol. Next is the elimination of heartworm microfilaria. Under this is the drug dithiazanine iodide. This is the only drug used as heartworm microfilaricide in dogs. For the mode of action, this drug inhibits the glucose uptake by the parasite and consequently affects the ATP formation. The parasites lose their motility and may become trapped in the capillary beds and are finally phagocytized by host cells. For the precaution, it should be given 6 months after the adulticidal drug. The interval allows improvement in physical condition of the dog following the stressful use of adulticidal thiacetarsamide. For the toxicity, repeated dosing may produce vomiting, diarrhea, anorexia, and asthenia. Another drug for the heartworm microfilaria is the diethylcarbamazine citrate. It is a piperazine derivative. It is used as a heartworm preventive. This drug acts against microfilaria but unfortunately sometimes a fatal shock type of reaction occur if the drug is given to microfilaria positive dogs. So, an infected dog must be cleared of adult heartworms and microfilaria before starting it on this type of drug. In humans, this is used in filarial infection caused by Bancrofti and tropical eosinophilia. For the mode of action, opsonization of microfilarial membranes so that they are readily phagocytosed by tissue-fixed monocytes, but not by circulating phagocytes. It affects the nervous system of the parasites and causes paralysis of the worms. It may also interfere with the parasite arachidonate metabolism. Let us move on to the next antelmentics, which is the antisystodal drugs or the drugs that affect the tapeworms. There are two types. First is the tinyafuge, which simply cause expulsion of tapeworms. They generally paralyze the tapeworm and are combined with purgative to facilitate expulsion. The other type is the tenicides, which cause the actual death of tapeworms in C2. There are three types of classification of antisystolo drugs. These are natural compounds, inorganic compounds, and synthetic organic compounds. Earliest antisystodal compounds. They were mostly plant origin and used for man and animals. They have been replaced by more efficacious and safer synthetic organic antisystodal drugs. Some of them are as follows. Pumpkin seeds. The active principle is cucurbitin. It has low efficacy but high safety even in debilitated and young patients. Male fern. The powdered rhizome of this fern was used against human cestodes. The active principle was found to be philicic acid that caused paralysis of the tapeworm. Kamala, drug of choice for cat tapeworms, causes paralysis of both cestodes and host intestinal muscle and never used in veterinary medicine. Nicotine, it is commonly given with copper sulfate for removal of ruminant tapeworms and roundworms. This drug causes persistent depolarization of the neuromuscular junction, followed by the paralysis of the worm. The efficacy and safety of this drug is low. Arecoline. It is an alkaloid obtained from seeds of betel nut palm, Areca catechu. It is still used in dogs. This is unstable, so its stable salts are used. Arecoline hydrobromide. The effectiveness of this is against all tapeworms of dogs, including Echinococcus. For the mode of action, it affects the neuromuscular system of the parasite, probably by acting as a cholinergic agonist, resulting in the paralysis and detachment of the worm from the intestinal mucosa. 
Its local cholinergic action also increases the peristalcytic movement of the intestine so that the detached worm is expelled by purgation. It also causes only temporary paralysis of the worm. Araculin acetersol. It is a white tasteless powder. It is administered orally as tablets. It is hydrolyzed in the stomach, releasing the active moiety araculin. It is used in dogs, cats against tinea and dipylidium, and as a laxative. Araculin carboxyphenyl stilbonate. It is used in dogs against tinea and dipylidium. The next classification is the synthetic organic compounds. Binamidine salts. Two binamidine salts are clinically used as antihistolo drugs and both are tenicides. Binamidine hydrochloride has a good activity against all tapeworms of dogs and cats. Binamidine hydroxynaphthoate. This drug is safely used against Monizia species in sheep, goats, even in pregnancy. For the mode of action, it disrupts the tegument of the parasite resulting into reduced rate of glucose uptake, aid ultimate death of the parasite. For its safety, it is safe in all stages of pregnancy. As for the toxicity, vomiting and diarrhea are the symptoms. This can be reduced by using hydroxynaphthoate salt. The drug may cause sensitization of heart muscle to catecholamine and sudden death of animals. Another drug is the niclosamide. It is widely used against tapeworm infections of dogs, cats, and man, but it has poor efficacy against Echinococcus and variable for dipylidium. This is also used against Monizia and Tysanosoma infections in ruminants and tapeworm infections in laboratory animals, monkeys, and reptiles. This is a tenicide and the mode of action include inhibition of glucose absorption by the worm. Dichlorophen. It is a white powder insoluble in water. It is mainly used as narrow-spectrum tenicide in veterinary medicine. It is effective against tinea and dipylidium in dogs and cats. It is ineffective against Echinococcus and has limited efficacy against Munisia in sheep. It has also bactericidal and fungicidal properties. Praziquantel. Chemically, it is an isokinelin and colorless, crystalline and bitter compound. Its efficacy include against all species of schistosomes pathogenic to humans. It has unique extremely high activity against wide range of adult and larval testodes of both animals and man. It is also effective against ruminant poultry and snake tapeworms and certain flukes. However, it has no activity against nematodes. It has wide margin of safety and no teratogenicity or embryotoxicity orally. For the mode of action, it acts by increasing the permeability of the nematode cell membrane to calcium ions. This causes the leakage of intracellular calcium from the membranes, resulting in contraction of musculature and eventual paralysis or death of the worms. It modifies the parasite so that it becomes susceptible to host's normal immune responses. Other synthetic organic drugs include hexachlorophene, which control of chicken tapeworms and toxic to dogs, Resorantel, which is highly effective against Munigia in both sheep and cattle and against Thysanigia, Gardi in sheep. Bithyanol, which is for the tapeworm infections in dogs, cats, and poultry. Tapeworm in rumen fluke infections of sheep, cattle, and goats. Bithyanol sulfoxide, a derivative of bithyanol, has equal antihistotal efficacy to bithyanol in dogs, sheep at lower therapeutic dose level of 60 mg per kilogram and has excellent efficacy against liver flukes of both sheep and cattle. Nitroscanate, which is active against tapeworms and roundworms of dogs but not suitable for cats. The next classification under antihistotal drugs is the inorganic compounds. Tin compounds, metallic tin with its oxide or chloride or dienbutyl tin dilarate. This is effective against tapeworms and is extensively used as antihistotal in man and domestic animals. For the mode of action, it forms a thin layer of coating on the cuticle of the tapeworm and rendering the strobila susceptible to digestion. As for the disadvantage, it needs daily administration for several days and produces side effects and toxic effects. The next drug is lead arsenate. It is highly effective against munisia. It was worldwide for the treatment of munisia infection in lambs, calves, and kids. 
It has low margin of safety and it should never be used in poultry. For the mode of action, the drug is hydrolyzed in the gut to lead and arsenic. The lead is transformed to lead oxide and the pentavalent arsenic to more toxic trivalent arsenic. The last type of anthelmintic is the anti-trematodal drugs. These are the drugs that are effective against trematodal reflux, fasciolosis, caused by fasciola hepatica is most common worldwide and has greatest economic importance. The rumen fluke, param fistomum in cattle and lung fluke, paragonimus in dogs and cats are important. Drugs that are effective against adult flukes, carbon tetrachloride. It is a volatile colorless liquid insoluble in water. As for the efficacy, it is effective against adult fasciola hepatica well tolerated in sheep and economic. It is also mainly used in sheep in the treatment of fasciolosis. Earlier, it was used for ascariasis in dog, cat, and poultry. Ancylostoma of dog and cats and stomach worms of cattle, but has now replaced by more effective antinematodal drugs. As for the toxicity and disadvantages, it lacks activity against immature flukes. It is hepatotoxic to mammals and in high dose causes giddiness, unconsciousness, and cardiovascular collapse. Toxicity is more in debilitated animals, animals with diseased liver, high fat diet, and in cold weather due to decreased excretion through expired air. For the mechanism of action, it is thought to be indirect through its metabolites or by inducing formation of toxic methyl sterol in the host liver due to interference with the cholesterol biosynthesis. Carbon tetrachloride blocks the cholesterol biosynthesis at a point that results in the formation and accumulation of toxic methyl sterols in the liver, bile, and urine of treated animals. This methyl sterol is highly toxic to the flux and produces lethal effects by interfering with the secretory and enzymatic activity of the gut epithelium of the parasite. It also uncouples oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria and interferes with anaerobic generation of ATP by the flux. This results in death of the flux. The next drug is hexachloroethene, a chlorinated hydrocarbon white crystalline substance. As for its effectiveness, it is highly effective against all species of adult fasciola in cattle and also against Haemonchus and Trichostrongylus. However, it is not effective against immature flukes and intestinal nematodes of ruminants. For the mode of action, it acts by uncoupling oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria and interferes with anaerobic generation of ATP by the flukes. For the toxicity, it is hepatotoxic but lesser than carbon tetrachloride, so used as alternative in cattle against fasciola infections. Other drugs include hexachloroparoxylin, is highly effective fasciolicide against fasciola hepatica in sheep. It is combined with benotiazine for the treatment of liver flux and GI nematodes in ruminants. Tetrachlorodifluoroethene, it is effective against only adult Fasciola hepatica infection and well tolerated in sheep. Hexachlorophene. Mature liver fluke infections in human and ruminants and cestode infection in canines. It has 100% effectiveness against adult fasciola hepatica and fasciola gigantica in sheep and cattle. It is less safe. Bithyanol sulfoxide is effective in rumen and liver flukes of domesticated and wild ruminants. It is more effective against adult than immature flukes. Bromosalans. Equal efficacy for adult flux used for treatment of fasciola hepatica infection and 100% effective against juvenile flux. Drugs against immature flux. Diamphenetide. It has exceptionally high activity against the immature stages of liver flux, especially in sheep, and comparatively less activity against adult flux. It is inactive in cattle. As for the mode of action, it undergoes the exhalation in the liver of the host by hepatic enzymes, and a high concentration of an active amine metabolite is formed in the hepatic parenchyma, which is responsible for its activity. This amine metabolite causes rapid killing of immature flux that are also located in the liver parenchyma until they are 7 weeks of age. It also affects the permeability of cells and vacuolation of tegument. It is used for prophylaxis for liver flux disease in sheep and for the treatment of acute fasciolysis. For its precaution, it should not be given to sheep producing milk for human consumption. It has a 7-day withdrawal period for meat. Drugs against both mature and immature flux. Triclabendazole. 
It has a quite different spectrum of activity directed against liver flukes. It is highly potent against liver fluke fasciola hepatica from day old to adult. It has no anti nematodal activity. For the toxicity and safety, the drug is well tolerated orally in sheep and cattle. It is neither teratogenic nor embryotoxic in rats. For the precaution, the drug should not be given to animals producing milk for human consumption. It is a 28-day withdrawal period for meat. Drugs used in paramphistomiasis. The following drugs are used effectively in the treatment of paramphistomiasis in sheep and cattle. Niclosamide, resorantel, bicyanol, and bicyanol sulfoxide. Drugs used in paragonimiasis. The drugs available for treatment of paragonimiasis in dog and cat. Praziquantil, albendazole, fenbendazole, and bicyanol. That ends my presentation. This is Ames Kasla and thank you for watching and listening.